Hi folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out the digital adaptation of the popular board game Takedo. I haven't had a chance to play this particular version yet, though I do own and have played the tabletop game. And I gotta say, it's an excellent set collecting game. Basically, uh, players assume the role of travelers. They sort of walk this path, stopping at different spaces and collecting different things. And again, it's set collection, so usually the more that you collect of something, the better, and then at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. Um, it's $10 on Steam, should you want to pick it up for yourself. I'll put a link in the below description. I'm going to go ahead and turn tutorial mode off, because I already know how to play. There's sound and music toggles here. There's an advanced graphics here, frame rate, anti-aliasing, enhanced camera. All right, with the tutorial mode off, we have different options here. There was a tutorial mode here. Uh, we have the option to play offline or online. Now, I, again, I haven't played this yet, but I'm assuming that in order to play online, you need to create an account. There's a your profile button in the upper left-hand corner. You can log into your account from here or create one. And again, I'm assuming you need that to go online. We're going to play offline today, and we're going to play... I guess we're going to do pass and play. That way I can show off different examples. Two travelers. Now, if I remember correctly, in the board game Takedo, when you're playing with two players, there is a third neutral player that players can control. And like I said, there are spaces in this game, and part of a two-player game is blocking up the other person from using spaces they, they may want by moving that neutral player. And of course, you can block spaces with your own character, too. All right, so we're going to not activate tutorial mode. In the beginning of the game, each player is dealt two travelers, and they get to choose one. Each traveler has a special ability and some starting cash. Uh, we'll go ahead and just choose this guy. I'm not going to go into all the different abilities because there's a lot of them. All right, um, sure. Start your adventure. All right. So right now it is blue player's turn. And like I said, al along the bottom there's this giant line. It is just, players are going to be walking upon this path. And whatever spot they land on, they interact with it in order to earn points. And again, it's set collection. You sh most of the time it's set collection. There are spaces that grant you straight out victory points. But for the most part, set collection. Um... Players can't usually occupy the same space. There are exceptions on the board, but um, for the most part, players can't occupy the same space. So blocking is a very real thing in this game. If you see your opponent is going after a certain colored spot, you may want to try and land on that as much as possible in order to stop them from getting it. Um, you can't go backwards in this game. So you have a choice. If you are trying to land on red spaces or green spaces or purple spaces, you can just jump to the next one, no problem. But you pass up other colored spaces in doing that, and you miss out on what they have to offer. So do you have a choice? Do you want to choose certain colors and only land on those and speed up your, your progress along the path? Or do you land on a little bit of everything and hope that your opponent doesn't block you on the space that you really need later on? So uh, let's just go ahead and, I guess, move this character up to the black space here. In this space, at the shop, you can buy souvenirs of different types to complete sets. The first souvenir you will buy costs only one coin. That is the special ability here at the beginning of the game. Um, let's go with... Saki, sure. It's a beautiful souvenir. Now, we could buy another one, I think, but I'm not going to do that. Alright, the other player's turn. Now, we can't move on to this one, I don't think. Nope. We'll move on to the red space on the very bottom here. On this space, a temple gives you the opportunity to donate coins. This player starts with six coins, so we may want to go ahead and do that. And if I remember correctly, yeah, each donation to the temple will give you a victory point. Whoever has the most at the end of the game, I believe, also gets some victory points. Um, there we go. And go. All right, 
So we donated a coin, got a victory point. We could have donated more if we wanted to. All right, now it's the neutral player's turn. All right, so um, now the neutral player is controlled by either person in this game. And usually it's the player that I believe... I think it's the one that's in, in the front. Yeah, because there is a little... If you take a look in the upper right-hand corner of the neutral player's avatar, there's a guy with a purple hat, and that's who this is over here. So I think the player that is ahead of everyone else... Uh, well, in a two-player game, it's the other person. Whoever's ahead of the two will get to control the neutral player. So we're going to bring, say, this guy... Again, you can skip spaces if you want. We'll go ahead and put this here. All right, now, players... There is no player order in this game. Whoever is in last place is the one that goes next. So it's, it's possible for you to go once and then again and again, so as long as you remain in last place. All right, so I can't land here because there's already someone there. Why don't we just jump to this space? An encounter allows you to meet someone who will help you. Let me help you complete the rice patty panorama. Okay. Now, panoramas are cards that you collect of a particular set. If you get all of the cards in that set, you get victory points. Okay. This player is in last place, so we're going to go and, I guess, move to this green spot. A rice patty gives you a section of this panorama pla uh, painting. All right. And again, there's different panoramas, too. There's three different panoramas, if I remember correctly. So this green one will give me, I think it's that set of three that you saw the other player get uh, via uh, random chance. Yeah. But there are two other ones. One that's a set of four and ones that are a set of five, if I remember correctly. All right, so now it's this player's turn. Um... That neutral player is there. All right, so this silver spot, a mountain gives you a section of this panorama plane. Okay, so we'll go ahead and choose that one. Yeah, this, this is the set of four that we need. If we don't complete it, you know, I mean, I don't remember if you get a partial points or not. I don't think so, but it's possible. But you want to try and complete this in order to get the most points. All right. There's a lot of different ways to score in Takedo. There's a lot of different spaces and a lot of different ways to score. I just don't remember all of them at the top of my head. Um, oh, that's kind of nice. I like this little overview button here. All right. So the next available space is the yellow one. A farm gives you three coins. Well, we've got five coins already, so we may not want to do that. The next space is a shop, and we can buy something, or we can move on to the red space. What's the red space? Okay, we can donate more coins if we want to. Um, we can move on to the purple space, but I think we're pushing it. Let's go back into the shop and just do that, I think. Three souvenirs. Um... <laughs> That might have been a bad purchase on my part. And the reason is, these gifts have a certain symbol next to them. And generally, you want to have a different... You, you're basic, basically trying to get one uh, of each picture to complete a full set. So, me buying the most expensive item there... I should have bought the 2-1 instead of the 3-1, but I remembered at the last second in order to score those. You just All you need is uh, one of each symbol. You don't need to ha buy the most expensive one, I don't think. All right. Um, again, it's been a while. Maybe I should have played the tutorial just to refresh my memory. All right, this guy is out of coins. Let's just go ahead. Actually, that's the neutral player. We're going to send the neutral player here. So that this player cannot land here to get coins. He's the one that benefits from buying at the shop. Uh, we can move him 
a random chance encounter. This one does what? This is, this is the, I think, the five-section panorama. Um, let's just jump here. Random encounter. Here are three coins. Okay, not bad. All right, neutral player's turn, controlled by the person in the lead. Um, where would this person need to go? He's think this person in the lead is thinking to himself, where does the guy with the old hat w most likely going to go? Um, this is the mountain panorama. This is a hot spring that randomly gives two to three victory points. Let's go ahead and block that off. He doesn't want his opponent getting any easy victory points. All right. Um, this player th might as well move here for free. Now, here's the thing. Is he going to donate any coins? You should save some money for... There's um, checkpoints throughout the map. And at these checkpoints, you can buy food. And food will determine victory points at the end of the game as well. And also determine... Uh, whoever gets there first determines who gets to go first um, when everyone lands there. Basically, whenever a player lands here, they have to wait for everyone else to get to that checkpoint before the game continues. But whoever gets there first gets the first dibs on the food and also gets to go first whenever, um, whenever it's time to actually move again. So I'm going to bypass this red spot. We'll jump to here and then here. There's no reason not to stop here. All right, one out of five. And might as well stop here. There's no reason. All right, two out of four. Now, another alternative. This other player could have landed here on this mountain to prevent this player from getting the second panorama out of that set of four. All right, um, this old guy is gonna go to the checkpoint. That's all they can really do. And again, this player gets first dibs on food. So we're gonna get the cheapest one. Um, sure. Oh, I, I thought I, I thought I clicked on it. Oh well, we'll try that again with this player. Again, I'm new to the digital version. All right, let's just go ahead, um, buy this one. All right, neutral player gets to move up as well. You can buy a meal, choose one of these. All right, all right fine. Okay, so that's going to continue for a while. As you can see, the map is fairly big. And I guess I didn't go over everything. There's a number of different ways that you earn victory points. There are certain, you know, hidden rules here and there. Like, okay, the person with the most of this at the end of the game gets some extra bonus points. So in addition to getting points along the way... You're going to earn points at the end of the game based on what you have. So, like, first impression-wise, this game is gorgeous. I love it. The board game is equally as gorgeous. And I'm really, really happy to see a digital adaptation of board games, uh, especially more and more, are starting to come out. And that's great because, you know, I, I have a lot of board games, and I don't feel like, like, my, my, my living room closet can only hold so many I have I have over 200 games in my attic because I can't possibly bring them all into the living room. So the fact that I can actually digit you know play a digital version of this whenever I want to, and have the computer do all the cleanup for me that is awesome. I'll take what I can get. It's 10 bucks on Steam. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. My advice though is to play the game with the tutorial, and if you can swing it. I would keep a little score sheet. Like, if you can print out some sort of cheat sheet on how scoring works, that way you can keep track of how everything works. Because, like I said, there's a lot of different ways to score in this game. More than I've covered 
in the video. So, um, yeah, my recommendation is uh, this game is all about scoring and completing sets. And to do that, you need to know how everything works, how every space works, what kind of points you get for this, what kind of points you get for that, what you get at the end of the game for this, what you get at the end of the game for that, what you get for this set, so on and so on and so forth. So if you can either play the tutorial a few times to get the scoring system ingrained in your head or have a, have a, like, uh, a rule book nearby from the board game, that would work too. Or you can download a PDF. Usually games nowadays have a PDF version online. There's probably one on Board Game Geek. But anyway, Takedo, excellent. Highly recommend it. Ten bucks on Steam. If you guys want to see a full playthrough of this, let me know. If you guys haven't already, subscribed to my channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.